head emission control. You might be wondering why I have to do the plasma cutting on these particular pieces, and that's because this is a red line, an official red line. I forgot to put it into the drawing uh, and didn't have it all figured out before I sent the pieces off to be cut. So this is a bad on me that I need to fix, but the cool thing is a plasma cutter makes really simple work of it. Uh, getting all these plugs and everything put in, uh, it's great seeing it all come to life. Well, just got the uh, third base completed. Uh, I was excited to share that with you guys. Uh, lots of little things that go into building these things. Took, takes about a day uh, to build a base, a, a little less than eight hours. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, is the wiring. And it would go faster if I had everything cut correctly. Uh, you know, all the red lines that I'm discovering, you know, things that I forgot. So that's why we do this. I can tell you, though, when I first started, a base took me like two days. And it was like a day and a half, and this one took uh, just a few hours. And the next one will go even faster because you get in all the measurements and everything just right. So instead of doing it the first time, now it's actually a process, which is how you want things to be when you're doing manufacturing. You want everything to be able to be put into an assembly line to go a lot faster. And I think we're there uh, with this. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the fact stainless steel is so darned expensive and uh, so heavy, I really like how these are turning out. I mean, I'm excited to get them growing. We've got all the veggies up in the germination chamber, uh, up in the garage, and uh, you know it's 
it's going to be exciting getting these moved over. The biggest thing that we're going to have a problem with that I foresee right now is nutrients. Uh, we're kind of having that problem with the grow boxes because I have a filter on the, how do I want to say it? Aquaponics is a balance. If you have too many fish, then eventually the plants and the fish will die. Uh, if you have too little fish, then eventually the plants die because uh, you don't get enough nutrients. So that tank and the shrimp loss that we had and everything, we, I had to put a filter on it to help keep the nitrates and nitrites down and ammonia down to a level that's good. And it's doing such a good job because it's a biofilter. There's not really a lot of plant food. Uh, so we're going to have to work on that. And uh, I have filters for these fish tanks as well because I perceive we might have the same problem. Uh, so we'll have to play around with that. I think that's going to be the biggest issue with these. But so far, the spray pattern, uh, how they're draining, how they're set up. Uh, actually, and I, it's really cool, kind of a different topic, but as I'm kind of having the stream of consciousness here, it parts from HAB1 are making their way into these things, things that I saved from HAB1, uh, like the Arduinos, the controllers. I don't think we're going to end up using Arduinos. I think we're going to probably do something different um, when we go to full-scale production. Uh, or probably even have just our own custom board and combine the relays, the 12 volt, the buck converter, and the, uh, the wire, the, the control board all into one would be what I desire. But we'll see. You gotta have the sales to warrant that commitment, the funds. But it's cool seeing have one kind of reshaped. Even the software, uh, this morning I was playing around with the server software, uh, reacquainting myself with it because I'm gonna change the software that I had written, the operating system, the OS, if you will, for have one. We're gonna upgrade it to be compatible with these systems. Uh, so, and then that will also be used, it'll evolve to be the LifePod 2 and the HAB2 control system. So we're writing this OS for Eat and Grow systems. The Eden OS, I guess, you know, EOS. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the Life OS, whatever you want to call it, some cool marketing name. Someone will have to come up with our marketing strategy there. But uh, it's neat seeing it all come over into these systems. Uh, it's really cool seeing how God took me through all the experiences we have, one, all the things that I didn't know how to do, and now uh, it's uh, it comes really easily. Uh, putting like the wiring and the digital and the controllers, and it's like, oh, you just plug all this stuff here. Da, 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 da. And uh, even writing the software, you know, just looking at the stuff that I already did and how I got to copy and paste. It's just really cool. I'm very grateful to God for the experiences he's given me through this project. And here we are. Um, like this base is for the double-decker tower. So tomorrow we've got the fish tank, uh, which is drill the two drain holes, connect um, the, the drains and the tubing, and then do a water check, uh, and then reseal if, if needed. Uh, do that test that's probably the biggest thing tomorrow and then do the double decker um, get all the tubing installed on that getting the flaps installed on those uh, and doing a water check on them as well which means the big thing remaining is really the base uh, for the potato tower uh, which takes the longest everything else takes a lot less time so uh, I'm missing a few parts they were supposed to show up today I've been having to run to Ace Hardware because there's little things that I thought I had enough of and I didn't, things that I didn't figure out that I needed, a lot of tube size conversions that weren't clear when I bought this stuff. So I, I've been running back and forth into town, dealing with the zombies and uh, everything that goes on there with that. Uh, but we're making good progress. A little tired, honestly a little tired right now, uh, worn down probably be the way to say it. we've been going pretty hard for a while off the off that crazy freaking diet I'm glad that's over with um, but yeah so sorry you haven't had like a, a great video in a while I've been really prioritizing getting this stuff done I need to get these towers done I need to get them growing because I have a bunch of projects on the ranch here that I got to get done because fall is here and uh, so I, I've got to have these things actually growing food so we can go through that testing, give me a little bit of window so I can go get some ranch projects done uh, and, uh, and move on from there. Come back to these, see a whole bunch of food growing. So very exciting, it's very exciting. Very exciting to see all this come together. If you guys don't know, if, if you're brand new to the channel, these grow towers are first of their kind in the market. Nobody else has commercialized aeroponic uh, and aquaponic systems together that I've been able to find. 
after looking at 45 different competitors, I think I'm actually up to like 47 now, no one has done this. Uh, especially our potato tower, which is really just taking aeroponic technology that folks like NASA and others, you can go search online, see a lot of folks doing that. We're taking those things and, and commercializing them and going to make this available to help feed people because if you haven't been reading your Bibles, if you haven't been watching the news, if you've been having your head in the sand somewhere on this planet uh, where there's no connectivity and you're just out there, you may not know that there's famine coming and that's a real thing. I'm not even joking about that. Um, it's already here in most of the world, but it's coming. I was just at the grocery store and noticed uh, shelves are getting a lot emptier uh, then I can I can keep an eye on it as I go. It's happening. It's happening. And these towers, these are the prototypes. Um, you know, these things. I think if you were to pay for them, they'd be the cost of uh, like a marijuana grow system. Uh, I, I looked online, and you can get an enclosure and a heater and all the stuff that goes with uh, growing marijuana. Uh, and it, it's around fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. You can make your own for cheaper. Of course, everything you can do, you can make your own cheaper. But if somebody doesn't have those skills, they don't have the tools. Uh, I think that you could probably buy these stainless steel, first of their kind, the Mark Ones, if you will, the Iron Man Mark One suits. You know, that's what these are. Uh, probably around twenty-five to three thousand dollars price. That's with a markup and everything like that. So. Um, I think that's too expensive. I think everyone agrees that's too expensive. But really compared to competitors that are doing the same thing, um, I mean, growing stuff indoors, the marijuana folks, honestly, we're, we're not that far off. And this grows food and could grow weed and all those other things too. Um, and it has fish in it and it's self-contained. The filtering system, everything here is designed to minimize labor, to maximize yield. Uh, and to be safe, easy to clean, food safe. Everything we learn from HAB1, these towers are starting to represent. HAB1 has a lot more lessons learned that we're going to be applying for the grow boxes and LifePod too, but these towers are really special. Uh, I think they're going to be cool. I, I'm biased because I designed them, but they were designed out of necessity and out of lessons learned. So uh, I know, hey, uh, shout out to RJ Aquaponics. RJ, you've been hard on me now. For good reason in some places, others you're kind of taking it too far. But either way, your words do make it through, and I didn't want to tell you uh, what I was doing when you were giving me some pretty harsh comments, um, because I sat there, honestly, I think you gave me a comment that said something like, you should be doing aeroponics, you should be growing stuff that way. And I was just like, oh, this is where I'm going to get you, dude, because you're not seeing the whole picture, but that's exactly what we're doing. So uh, good on you for thinking that. Thank you for sticking around. I'm, I'm, you give me a hard time, I'm giving you a hard time back here. I think you respect me and I, I'm respecting you for what you're doing. In fact, I wish you lived closer because uh, I'd have you over, we'd have a beer and we'd start talking about nutrients, buddy. Um, nutrients are it. Uh, the shrimp are doing great. The food and everything in there, the water testing is coming out. It's great, it just doesn't have the nitrates in it that are needed for the plants because that biofilter is doing so well. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Anyway, you haven't heard me ramble for a while. You got the ramble. Here's the update. We got the single deck. We got the corn tower on Buddy Breathing set up with that because Buddy Breathing, if you didn't know, that's set up so that you don't have to buy all these fish tanks. You know, you don't have to have a fish tank on every tower. You can have one fish tank and feed multiple things. And we're finding that out with the grow box, right? So this is designed in. You can have a single uh, fish tank that maybe does four or five, depending on how dense you populate it, towers that are all on buddy breathing. And uh, buddy breathing is something you do in scuba diving, which I have my scuba gear, I need to sell it. If anyone wants a dry suit in the full set, except for tanks and weights, I'm selling, because so I'm never gonna get to go scuba diving again. Either way, not the point. The point is that buddy breathing, you have an extra regulator, and you also have a connection that you can connect into so that somebody else can breathe if they're running out of air. So these towers are actually set up with that buddy breathing connection. So all you gotta do is run a hose from one tower and connect it in. That means if one fish tank is dying, dead, empty, broken, missing, leaking, whatever it is, you can still grow your food. You just have to buddy breathe. So cool, man, that's so freaking cool. I love this design. Just gotta get the nutrients. So I gotta finish it. 
I'm gonna go inside, take it easy, get some rest. It is hot here still. It's upper 80s, low 90s. The smoke is here. Every morning I'm waking up, we got black stuff coming out. It, lots of smoke. And uh, I think it's kinda kind of getting to me. Uh, making me tired. So, yeah, it's nice. The filters, the 50 micron filters, everything here, it's looking good. I'm even happier. I'm, ugly Ducklings wiring really turned out ugly. <laughs> but uh, after I did the second tower, I really got it nailed in. I really like how it's, it's wiring up now. Uh, it might be a way I can make it easier in the future, but we'll see. I think probably also want to do some circuit breakers in here. I got a fuse in the system, but I think we're going to need some circuit breakers and uh, some more lights, status lights, and all those kind of things. So we'll see. Anyway, lots of stuff to do. Lots of opportunity. Lots of things. So thank you so much for following along. Thank you, everyone, for following along. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And hey, I'm serious, y'all. Read your Bibles. Get the Bibles out. Start with Romans, uh, Romans 12, 1, I think it is. Good indication of what's going on there. Uh, someone can correct me if I, it might be Romans 1, 12. I think, I think it's Romans 12, 1. Check that out, and I can check tell you some other stuff. We'll, we'll do a live stream here one of these days. You guys can um, poke me in the stomach, poke me in the eye, kick me in the butt, whatever you want to do. But uh, if you really like what we're doing, you can follow us on Patreon. But everybody, this is The Real Martian. Out.